Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today, I am especially ecstatic to have with us Terry Myerson, CEO of Truveta, together with BJ Moore, CIO and EVP of Real Estate Strategy Operations at Providence. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for having us. Great to be here, George. Appreciate it. You know, this is especially exciting and, you know, sort of inspiring on so many different levels because you truly both with your organizations are changing the world. And I'd like to begin with you, Terry. Terry, can you kick us off a bit about telling <laughs> us what is Truvetta and how did it come about? What is Truvetta? Well, uh, I think, let me start by how it came about. I mean, I think, you know, it's great to be here with BJ because I think, I think kind of in some ways it started, you know, BJ and I worked together at Microsoft for many years. Um, and then I think we both left Microsoft after, I mean, for me, it was 21 years. I'm not sure how many years it was. 27 years, yeah. 27. I did, I did but yeah, but uh, so we both left in 2018. Is that right, BJ? Uh, 2019. Yeah. Okay. You, you, one year later. You stayed a year well, long. I but, missed uh, you. Um, you know, BJ went straight into healthcare, I think, at Providence. For me, I went into uh, venture capital and private equity after and I really started, I fell in love with the intersection of data sciences and the life sciences. BJ and I stay in touch. March, 2020, the pandemic happens. And I think quite, you know, fortuitously for me, you know, B BJ gives me the opportunity to join one of his teams, you know, to try and study what was going on with the pandemic. It met my interest at the time. And, uh, you know, it was an opportunity to really try and understand what's going on. And what I saw just opened my eyes. It was, uh, we didn't have the ability to ask and answer questions about the best way to treat patients, which therapeutic paths would work well for these new patients with this new disease we were facing. And, you know, I learned of this project, Truveta, that Providence had uh, been talking about, you know, there was a great white paper. They had talked about it with other health systems for years at that point. This idea that we'd build this national data collective this, this we build a data platform that be representative of the whole country it's full diversity and be able to ask and answer these questions about the best way to treat patients and out of that came a company uh, and so Trevetta is now a new company providence is a member of the Trevetta collective as is over 20 other U united states health systems now which you know we they contribute their data we structure, normalize, de-identify that data and make it available for research, for public health, for studying the safety and effectiveness of therapeutics, for designing new therapeutics, for understanding health equity in communities, for understanding the best way to treat patients. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, that's what Trevetta is. Trevetta is this research, research platform to study the best way to treat patients. And it was formed out of this you know, moment in time during the pandemic where it was clear we were not making data driven decisions and how we do that today. And, you know, Terry, you've just described what it is that Providence is doing. I mean, this this notion of incubating, of innovating and, you know, BJ credit credit to you and Providence for incubating and creating and, and serving as that platform that would allow for a Truvetta to be born, right? A Truvetta to be able to connect the dots, those critical dots around data yep. to help with health outcomes. And we all know how critical that is. BJ, you have been a leader. You are a leader. You are a leader of Microsoft. You're leading at Providence. You're at the forefront of technology, AI, and data-driven solutions in healthcare. Yep. How does Truvetta fit within this broader range of tech innovation that you're driving at Providence? Well, I'll, I'll uh, embrace your flattering uh, description of, of what we're doing here at Providence. I do think we have great talent, great leadership. I think we're doing great things. But as good as we are, we can't really compete with the quality of talent that Truvetta can attract, the great work that they're doing. 
And as big as our data set is, you know, we've got information on 35 million uh, patients. You know, the, the larger the data set, the more diverse that data set, the better the insights. And so, you know, as, as capable as we as Providence may think we are, you know, where va uh, the value of a Truveta comes in is, you know, they can attract a, a quality executive like Terry, the quality of talent he's brought in from from tech companies like Microsoft and Amazon and other kind of tech companies, you know, is unprecedented. It's something that we couldn't couldn't ever compete with. And then having, you know, 20 plus health systems in there, we, we benefit from a much larger data set, a more diverse data set. So as capable as we may be, what we're able to achieve through Truveta is, is truly, you know, a force multiplier. And then the beauty is they focus on the tech, they focus on building these tools, they focus on building these capabilities, normalization of data, et cetera. And then we as Providence can really focus on the differentiator for our patients and communities, which are the data insights. I mean, it's a lot of work to build a data platform and, and allowing Truveta to do their magic and then focusing our efforts on the insights using their tools and their, their more diverse, larger data sets. It's, it's a it's a win win. Well, and that's what I see is, is the key here is the win win. And, and as we look at Terry, you mentioned early on in this interview, 20 plus health systems and growing in the Truveta network of this data driven impact organization that you're driving and leading. As you've worked with these CIOs and CEOs, now you're at 20 health systems and growing. What are your big, perhaps your biggest takeaways about what has compelled them to join you and Truveta on this journey for better health outcomes? Well, you think about the, the spark which allowed Truveta to, that brought me to the Truveta or, and allowed, you know, if you go back to summer of 2020, when we were going through these very formative discussions about how could you structure a, a company that would attract the people and the capital and the data and the researchers to this place. You know, it was the pandemic. It really was this moment in time when it was just so clear with the current data and the current systems, there was no way to ask, ask or answer who should be intubated, for how long should they be intubated? How should you treat a, a patient who presents with symptomatic COVID? Should you be using remdesivir or dextamethasone. There was no good, there was no platform, there was anecdotes, there was personal experience, but the, the, the current healthcare systems do not allow you to answer these questions. They do not allow you to understand the safety of vaccines, which you're giving our children in real time. That is the, 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 the that was what inspired the creation of Truveta. And that's, um, you know, Providence, I mean, sorry, Providence had the foresight to see that this was needed. I mean, there was this white paper in 2018 that actually the name Truvetta, you know, the name Truvetta came out of the Providence team. You know, when I, when I was, became aware of this, they had already chosen the name Truvetta. They had already uh, written about, you know, written about the need for this, but then it was actually activating the idea and you know, turning it from a really, I think, just a terrific idea into a company. And I don't know, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's been, it's September will be two years. The company will be two years old. And um, it's just been a really incredible experience to, to build with these other, build, build Truveta with the health systems. And, and Terry, I want to, I want to, um, I guess I'll ask you a question. Sorry, George, go a little off script. Um, <laughs> You know, what, what I love is, you know, what we're doing at Providence is we've got, you know, all of our data and electronic health record at the time of the pandemic. Unfortunately, it was in all scripts and Meditech and Epic. It was spread across multiple. So even consolidating in Truveta was a benefit. Having the other 20 health systems in there is a benefit. But you've brought in other data sources that have enriched that data, right? You've had, yeah. Truveta's had insights to bring in data sets that we weren't bringing in that have really supplemented it. So it's more than just taking our electronic health record data. It's these other rich yeah, data sets. There's, there's, you know, there's, 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 it's really, it's really interesting to see how distributed data is, you know, just death, you know, only one third of people die within the health system. And so if you want to understand outcomes, I think one of the more 
clear outcomes is did the individual die? And for that, you need what's in the industry known as fact of death, which can come from the Social Security Administration, credit bureaus, a bunch of things, socioeconomic data to understand, you know, a lot, so much of what drives the health outcome is socioeconomic status. Uh, you know, what's called claims data, you know, the medical bills that insurance, when insurers pay, you know, Providence has this incredible data set for all the treatments they provide, but I, you know, I have to admit, I sometimes get care at Virginia Mason in our local community also, which happens to be a Truveta member uh, as part of their common spirit affiliation. And then, uh, you know, I sometimes have gotten care at UW here locally. And so, you know, now with Truveta, we see, you know, Providence researcher can see the care at Virginia Mason and the care at Providence and see shallower but un they can know that the care existed through the insurance claims coming in at UW. And so really it's the, you know, it just comes from the intensity of focus and say, how do you build the highest quality data set that's complete, timely, representative, you know, you tested the validity of all, you know, normalized the validity and all these different things. And, you know, it's the, you know, Providence is, the, you know, does an amazing job of providing care and 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 provide you know that compassionate high quality care in the moment but the you know the the 200 people at Truvetta right now waking up every day to say how do you compile the most complete timely representative data set you know it's it's a different thing than providing care and you know providence had the foresight had the you know had the spark and you know, and just, it's, it, 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 I feel like we're still, you know, I feel, you know, we sometimes describe Trivetta as a collective in the sense that, you know, we are, we are with these health systems building this data platform, you know, so I don't think of Providence as a customer. I think of, you know, I'm, I think of Providence as like part of Trivetta, Trivetta is part of Providence. I, I don't know what the right way to think about it, but. Uh, if, and the so progress your team has made. Terry, right in two years is just fantastic. Like you think about any other tech company that starts two years ago in the middle of pandemic and the progress you've made, but like we're scratching the surface. Like the capabilities of Truveta is maybe 3% of the, the total potential value. So as much progress we've made in two years, like the, the future is just. Well, we're, uh, you know. um, I'd, I'd like to make more progress. So I, I... <laughs> Well, I mean, there is so much, I mean, there is, you know, there's sort of this thing where, you know, the, I've worked on projects where you kind of like, ah, we've kind of finished our ideas. We kind of like, we, you know, we, we've done version 10. I'm not sure what version 11 should be. That's not Trivetta. Trivetta is this, there's sort of, you know, focusing sometimes becomes the challenge because there is so much opportunity to have an impact across different industries, across so many patients with so many different ailments. And um, we are definitely just getting started. Well, I, I, think, I think what's inspiring here for me, and this is truly epic in terms of the impact and the vision, et cetera, is the leadership component. Dr. Rod Hockman, Providence, the leadership of Microsoft. I'd like to ask you both because it's, it's obvious that you both came from an incredible place. Microsoft, right? A place where, you know, there's sometimes uh, limitless boundaries in terms of the tech and where you're going and, and all of that. How has that shaped, how has that shaped your view, Terry and BJ, in terms of the importance of this, the, the notion that the data, the trusted source of information, that those two things combined can help change these vital outcomes for patients across really across the planet. You want to go, BJ? <laughs> I was hoping you were going first, Terry. <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, the value, uh, you know, says so at Microsoft for 27 years, the value of being in a large company, seeing things done at scale was, was a huge advantage. Um, you know, uh, one of the largest uh, big data models in the world, you know, was really under Terry's leadership. So seeing firsthand that the insights you can get, the power of big data, the power of ML and AI, um, you know, Microsoft is probably 10, 15 years ahead of, of, of healthcare systems on this. So seeing the kind of art of the possible, 
um, being in the middle of that technology, uh, seeing the evolution of that technology, and then you know being able to apply that to this new area has been a huge advantage. Um, and I think Truveta, the, the differentiator for Truveta is they've been able to start with a clean slate, you know, in the cloud, you know, in Azure, native big data, native ML and AI tools. And so the advantage they have over other kind of data consortiums is, is huge. So I would just say, you know, the experience at Microsoft outlined what was possible with big data and, and it's, you know, it's, it's huge, it's limitless. And then applying those patterns, that technology to a unique problem in healthcare in a modern way, you know, sets TrueBet up for success in a way that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for that Microsoft Microsoft experience. Thanks yeah. for letting me go first, Terry. I think I stole some of your thunder. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing that, you know, working at Microsoft exposed me to, you know, or with the team we built there was the, this idea that you have this real time learning you're getting, you know, you have over a billion Windows PCs, tens of millions of Xboxes, you know, they're all sending real time data back to Microsoft anonymized and, you know, Microsoft's learning and iterating, you know, much like, um, you know, Netflix has got real time learning on what we're all watching for how long we're watching it, who we're watching it with. And, you know, and they use that to in inform how they should, you know, what media they should create. Tesla cars are collecting data in real time to enable self-driving cars. Well, healthcare isn't collecting any of that. They're not, they're, none of that real-time learning loop is taking place. Uh, and then that just became so evident during this pandemic when it was like, we need to learn how to take care of this new disease. We need to learn, you know, all these different things that are being tried everywhere in the world on all different types of patients with all kinds of different situations. All of that knowledge needs to be studied and understood so we can just improve and continuously improve and get better and better and better. You know, the current tools of learning in healthcare are these scientific research studies that are published in medical journeys after sometimes years of delay, clinical trials, which take, you know, years of contracting and study and delay. And when you think about medical knowledge being shared on this cadence of, you know, publications published over years, clinical trials done over years, bringing the scientific discipline of those those methods but to more real-time data-driven learning i think is our opportunity and i think that you know at the core it is that accelerated learning that i think this could be so profound on clinical care on the design of new therapies on public health policies we just need to tighten that keep the scientific integrity but really tighten up and speed up that that learning loop and you know it's it's being done within tech across all these products. You know, it's, it's being done within the Amazon store. It's being done, you know, with video games. It's being done with Netflix movies, with our cars. It can be done in healthcare. And uh, that, that accelerated, you know, it's like what we will learn or what therapy will have an impact on or what treatment will have an impact on. It's hard to tell, but it's just, if we can accelerate the learning of all these brilliant people that are at the bedside that are designing our care facilities, I just think will have such a profound impact. And how do we move from being episodic, right? I mean, today healthcare is episodic. I feel sick. Most likely I decide not to go to the doctor. You know, eventually I go to the doctor and, and you know, they may have been, boy, I wish you would have been here a month ago. You know, the treatment would have been easier, you know, with these kind of real time data sets that Terry's talking about for the first time in history, we've got technology that could, you know, monitor, or look at my health more real time and more proactively reach out, you know, hey, PJ, you know, based on the, the data that we're seeing other patients, we see that you may be pre-diabetic, you know, why don't you intervene now before I've got symptoms? And you can well, only do that at scale with technology. A doctor couldn't follow me around and do that. But, you know, an ML, you know, bot can easily, you know, track the, the changes in my health compared to other people that are similar to me and, and make recommendations. So we move from being episodic to being proactive. And the quicker we can intervene on a health outcome, the better the health outcome is going to be. I go back to I, the, the, the incredible part of this conversation is the fact that that Providence had the foresight and the leadership. You got to go back to the leadership again to think about the importance of not just owning this, but unleashing it to the world to do it right. 
And that's what we're talking about here. I mean, Truvetta, 20 plus health systems, you know, sparked out of and in the midst of a pandemic, first time in human history, we all experienced the same thing. Patient number one at Providence in, in Seattle. I mean, you can't, you can't make some of this stuff up in terms of where we started. And you couple that with a, a question that I'd like to ask you both, which is, there's so much information out there. There's so much information for the average person who's not in tech or not, you know, fully understanding how to get to the right information. I'm thinking that Truvetta is helping to lead to become, in essence, a trusted source of information based on the fact that it's anonymized data coming in from so many different sources that is just demonstrative of what's actually happening. And I think that's sort of what's missing pre Truvetta, pre this, this company, because there's really no place to go to, to accomplish exactly what you just alluded to BJ, which is I'm not feeling well, or maybe, you know, whatever it is. And it's too late. You know, it's simply too late. Um, happened to my mother, you know, stage four metastatic breast cancer. It was too late. It was too late. She couldn't get ahead of the stage four. And, you know, if you could go back in time and someone would have said, well, you know, here's what you need to do. The outcome would have been much different, sadly. You know, and so I'm, I'm personally and professionally inspired by this conversation because of that, because you can see directly the elements and the effects and the effects of the leadership that has come out of Providence and obviously Microsoft here to, 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 to bring forth this incredible, incredible project. And so BJ, in terms of customer zero for Truvetta, your customer zero, your number one, right? Yep. First customer, what have you seen, seen so far in terms of the benefits in this strategic partnership? And of course, in the implementation, you've alluded to a lot of it, but yep perhaps more specifically? Well, first, I want to give uh, Terry and Truvetta a little more credit. You know, Providence did have the white paper. We did have the idea. But if Terry didn't join my team, if he didn't personally roll up his sleeves, if he didn't, you know, personally look at the data insights that we were needed as part of the pandemic, this Truvetta would still be a white paper. It'd still be an idea. So really, it's, you know, it's the person that takes it from an idea and executes upon it, you know, that gets gets a big piece of credit. So, you know, big credit to Terry and, and his leadership there. As far as, as being customer zero, the benefits, you know, have been obvious, right? Obviously, Terry and I have worked together. A lot of the engineers that he's hired, you know, we're, we're engineers I work side by side with at, at Microsoft. So we already have the relationships, the network, the, the partnership is there. You know, we're located, you know. Uh, 10 miles apart from each other. So collaboration working side by side is, is enabled um, by us being customer zero, right? We've been able to identify what are the early data sets? What are the early problems we want to go after? What are the data models? How do we clean up the data? So, you know, I think it's been a, this, you know, we've been able to influence the data that goes into Truvetta. Truvetta has gotten the benefit of, you know, the close collaboration and the acceleration of, of the work they do. But, you know, selfishly, the, the biggest benefit for us is because we're customer zero, our data got into Truvetta first and therefore our data was normalized and, 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 um, you know, the, the anonymity of the, the patient data was, was done there first. So we were able to get the insights first as well. So it's, it's definitely been a symbi symbiotic relationship. I think we accelerate the data modeling and the normalization and the great work that Terry and his engineers do. And then selfishly Providence gets the benefits because our data is in there first. And so it's, it's kind of the, you know, the, the, the perfect example of a win-win situation. We're both benefiting from that, that partnership, that relationship. I love that win-win. I love the description, BJ and Terry. So can you describe the importance of community and how Truvetta is impacting the research community? And further from that, what will the future based on all of this, the future of research look like via Truvetta? Well, I, I, the word community, I think, can mean many things. But the, the, when I hear that question, I reflect that, you know, one of the experiences during the pandemic was that, you know, Providence Healthcare tried to tried to 
you know, actually you mentioned Rod Hockman earlier, you know, he, you know, the CEOs of Providence, Northwell and Trinity Health said, you know, we need to get our data scientists to work together and collaborate. And these three organizations that were all trying to understand this pandemic, this new disease, you know, you know, the original idea was couldn't Shrevetta be this, you know, basically just be a community of researchers that get together and try and study the disease together. And it was just one of those eye opening moments where there was no there was no way to sh share the analytics anyone was working on. There was no way to share the definitions or how to define or detect this disease. There was no way to share or build on each other's work. And it's just one of these fascinating eye opening moments. Like, what are you seeing? Are we seeing the same thing? How are you measuring that? And that that sharing, that that building on each other's work, being able to inspect each other's work and say, ah, oh, you're that's really like how you're doing that. I trust the data you're sharing with me and uh, I want to build off it. We want to facilitate that kind of collaboration with Truetta. We want our members to be able to build off each other's work, accelerate the innovation each of them are doing. But really, it's, I think we'll build trust. We'll build trust by enabling that inspection and understanding how each other are doing because it's all isolated right now. I mean, one of the each of the you know, one of the things about healthcare is that we have just brilliant, amazing, inspired people within each of these systems. But the technology is in the in some ways, the legal pathways have not been, you know, before Trivetta have not been paved such that they could share and they, they could not, sh they, they, they could share their work, allow each other to inspect their work and build off each other's work. And that when I, that's what I mean by when I think about research community, I think it's that building that trust in each other's work, such through inspection and transparency, and then building off each other's work so we can all learn faster. That's my rambling way of saying that. <laughs> and, and George, let me give you a real example that I've seen. You know, take what is the definition of a fully vaccinated individual, right? It sounds simple, but it's easy to have multiple interpretations of that. And so if you then take that query and do research on, you know, how are fully vaccinated folks handling COVID, you can get vastly different outcomes. The beauty of the Truvetta platform is you can define what a fully vaccinated patient is. Everybody can inspect and look at it and then they can reuse it. So every health system isn't redefining it. You know, effectively, we can agree on what that means. And then that simple filter becomes a filter that then they can research. So, you know, comparing apples to apples between the outcomes become much more simple versus if somebody at health system one made a slightly different definition of what fully vaccinated than health system five, they both come to vastly different results and that's not helpful for our communities. It's not helpful for the pandemic. And so just a simple example like that, you know, Terry and his team demoed that, you know, six, nine months ago and you just see it firsthand. You're like, wow, that's, it sounds so simple and basic, but the power of that and then the reusability of that, it's just, it's tremendous. Well, and I, and I think that, that you're going back to exactly what, what I alluded to earlier, which is the trusted source of information. I mean, you can't argue the fact that this data is what it is. I mean, it's actual real, real time, real person data that's helping to inform an effective decision making process that will greatly, you know, remarkably so impact health outcomes. And we've been talking about this for years in terms of where is that trusted source of information for health related outcomes well it sounds like this is it this is it in terms of what is full well, we got a lot we got a lot of work to do i i, I saying this i mean you, you you got the vision you got the inspiration you got what you know got this off the ground our opportunity is to make this it i think that's george it. what i would add to your talk track though you know terry's been very modest here um what I love is that it's 20 health systems that own Truvetta, right? There's other investors, but it's primarily owned by these 20 health systems, right? And so there's nice alignment between the investors and Truvetta as a company. Terry's been able to attract world-class tech talent, right? So I think the other pattern or model has been to give this, you know, very sensitive data to tech companies like Google or Amazon, allow them to analyze it. I don't know that they're as objective or as trusted with patient data as as a consortium like Truvetta. So we get the beauty of kind of the ownership of the health systems who are, who are protectors of that data. 
And then Terry is able to track the kind of tech talent for Truvetta. So we're able to achieve both goals. So I think, yeah, there's a lot more work to be done. I mean, the journey is a lifetime journey, but the way it's been structured really creates a nice um, set of accountability and, and treats the patient data with, you know, the kind of respect and security that, that it deserves, that it wouldn't probably get if, you know, I'll pick on poor uh, Google that it would give if, you know, we just gave the data to Google and said, you know, show us the insight from this patient data. Right, right. And, that, and it's that transparency that I think sounds like it's key here for a win-win situation to get better health outcomes. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. And so, BJ, strategic use cases. What are the strategic use cases you see enabled through this partnership? For example, improving care, yeah. health equity, patient empowerment, et cetera. All those things that are, you know, the the bedrock yeah. uh, patient outcomes. Yeah, I'll give you two answers, George. There's, you know, I'll wear my CIO hat. My CIO hat says, you know, the strategic benefits is you know, Terry and his team can do all the natural language processing. They can do all the, you know, anonymization of the patient data. They can, you know, um, standardize the data across health systems. So my team doesn't have to recreate the wheel. You know, strategically, we can just leverage that that outcome. Um, you know, as far as on on the, you know, the health side of things, you know, Terry already mentioned the efficacy of, of vaccines and, and treatments. That's been super insightful. You know, we're evaluating, you know, biomed devices and the effectiveness of those biomed devices and, and looking at that for the first time, looking at pulling in image data, both the, the, the information, you know, the, the report side of the image data, as well as insights from the images themselves. You know, there's tens of millions, hundreds of millions of in images, uh, billions of images um, that we have here at Providence and, and gaining insights there in a way that you couldn't, you know, with uh, human eyes, um, you know. So I, I think we're just we're just opening the door to the possible insights. The, 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 the list of things is, is long. So it's retroactively looking at the efficacy of something. And then, as I mentioned, and Terry mentioned, you know, kind of the more real time streaming and more evaluating the real time health of a community or real time health of an in individual. So there's there's just a ton of stuff that we can do. Here. Well, and BJ, it goes back to the license that you have uh, with the mantra of Providence and the mission of Truvetta as a company combined to be able to take this forward. And so, Terry, I'd like to go back to your background. So you've you're you're changing the world that you know you have a mission to literally change the world i mean i've heard during this interview this is the first time really where we're getting these deep credible transparent insights i mean that for me having seen the healthcare system as i mentioned with with my mother's you know battle valiant battle against stage four metastatic breast cancer i mean you can see and i can hear and I can really feel the the impact of the work that you're doing. And I've got to tell you, it's 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 just beyond inspiring. And so 27 years, that's that can't be possible based on your current age. But let's say it's true. He's right? 21 years. He's younger. 21 years. Me. 27. <laughs> I'm 27 years. I'm the okay. old guy. Terry's, that's why he looks so young. OK. All right. Well, even so, it's still not not possible, but we'll accept it as a truth because we're transparent here. How did this, your background, 21 years, and it's, you know, in working in the tech in industry, it's like dog years, right? I mean, it's everything so fast. I know. I've heard it. And so how has this data-driven approach and all the capacity building around it been shaped by your background? Gosh, I mean, it's so, you know, you, you, it's so interesting to track the paths in your life and um, try and see how things come together. I mean, you know, in 1994, myself and a few other people started a, one of the first internet companies and we were doing data analytics and who was visiting your website and trying to figure out where did they come from and what type of user would come back more often. And Microsoft, you know, acquired that company early 1997 and I moved to Seattle and there, you know, my Microsoft career really had two, you know, there's no real, you know, data became an ingredient in my, you know, I divided my Microsoft career into 10 years building Outlook and Exchange 
getting into Office 365, or early, early days of Office 365, but really trying to understand users, how they communicate, how we could um, just make it the most efficient way for the world to communicate, you know, with email. Because, you know, email was kind of, you know, was coming of age and get coming into our culture during that time. And then, you know, the last decade of Microsoft, when I was working with BJ, it was, you know, Windows and Xbox. And so now you have a billion users. And the only way you're going to learn about what your users want and how to do better for those users is with data. I mean, you certainly get plenty of feedback from your spouse and your kids on, and your own personal experience with those products. But, you know, you can't be too influenced by, you know, what you know, all your relatives asking you for help with Windows, but you actually do need to look at the data. You need to learn, you need to learn about what's going on in the Philippines with your customers or what's going on in Canada with your customers in businesses and governments at home. And so you learn to you to see the value of learning from data. And you know, I think the I guess if there's two other things that you know, working at the scale of, you know, Windows sort of makes the idea of organizing the country's medical records kind of something that, you know, myself and uh, my teammates here at my at Trivetta, you know, that's the scale we've, we've worked on before. So we kind of we're humbled by what it's going to require to do it. But we've, we've worked at that scale before. So we, we think we, we know how to do this. And um, I guess the other thing I would say is, you know, working with 20 health systems has challenges. Um, and, but, you know, a mental framework, you know, when I was leading Windows, I had many OEMs building PCs and I had software vendors building software and they all come together into an ecosystem which makes Windows work for Microsoft. I think, you know, at Trivetta, we have the same thing. We have these 20 health systems, um, much like with Windows, Dell, HP, and Lenovo have a very special place within the Windows ecosystem. You know, Providence has got a very special place within the Trivetta ecosystem. But understanding how special ecosystems can be with many members and how, you know, everyone can be in some, in, in many ways, everyone is treated equal, but in some ways, certain health systems like Providence are treated special and just being clear and transparent with everyone in the ecosystem about that just creates trust and kind of can accelerate things forward. So it's a, I'm, I, you know, you said some very nice things, both of you had it's just, it is, Trivetta is just a really special company. It's a really special opportunity. It inspired me to, you know, have this, you know, new career that, a, you know, you know, adventure that, I think will be the most impactful thing I've ever worked on in my life. So it's very exciting. Well, I've got to tell you, uh, you know, what I, what I took away from your last statement, I mean, I'm not BJ knows me. We've known each other for several years and I'm never really at a loss for words, but I've got to tell you, I'm at a loss for words. I, I, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm humbled by the fact that we have someone and, and this is just fact based on what you just said in your background that's worked at scale before and you know how to do this, end quote. Well, <laughs> there's things we know how to do and we're learning every day what we don't know. But there's, you're learning every day. But you've but seen, there's, there's, you've seen at scaled, scaled systems, scaled data, got that. Medical yeah. data, a whole new world, I would just say. Right. <laughs> but, but, but that confidence in terms of the data and how to analyze it will go a long way in helping this vision come forth and, 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 and change these, these critical outcomes, which I think is, yeah. is just humbling. It's humbling to see it. It's humbling. I know it's a monumental task. We know, we know, but you've got to start somewhere. And that somewhere is already off like a rocket ship. Terry and BJ, what is the future of Truvetta and Providence? We've heard glimpses of it. Yeah. What is that? Let's start with BJ. Yeah, I think it's it's building upon the foundation that we already have. Um, you know, the power of big data is is building that big data, and we're not there yet. Um, Truvetta's got a lot of information on on patients, um, so the future is how do we add additional, 
you know, health systems uh, here in the U.S.? How do we, you know, potentially add, you know, health systems outside of the U.S.? Um, how do we add additional data sources? So we mentioned, you know, image data, you know, DNA data. There's a lot of other information that we can add to really um, have insights on a patient that we just don't have today. <clears throat> and then how do we move to, you know, streaming data, Internet of Things? Um, so our, our smart skills, your your activity monitor, your heart rate monitor, things that we don't capture at all today in electronic health record. And we be can begin getting that stream data and adding it to, to the information. So when we look at these big data models, we unleash the power of ML and AI. We've got large data sets, but start getting these real-time data sets that don't exist. What those insights look like, um, what we may learn from that is to be determined, but um, we got to build that platform first. And once that platform is, is built, um, then we can begin getting those insights. And, and Terry, sorry to keep tooting your horn, but I mean, there's only, you know, one Windows ecosystem in the world. And to get somebody that is has worked at that scale and had that kind of real-time telemetry coming in, the lessons you learn, you know, running something at scale are, are lessons you can't learn anyplace else. So having that skill set, having the engineers that Terry is, you know, attracted to Truveta and seeing that problem. So yes, the medical information is very unique. Um, and, and we'll get a lot of insights from our, our researchers and doctors. But doing this at scale and applying these tools of machine learning and artificial intelligence at scale gives Truvet an advantage that I don't think other kind of data consortiums as it relates to health data, you know, have. So excited to partner with Truvet, excited to be customer zero. And, you know, the future is 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 huge. I mean, we're just scratching the surface. Yeah, I mean, for when I think about that question, you know, building on everything, I hate that, you know. BJ just covered so much service, but I come back to the mission statement we have for the company. You know, it's the, we certainly want to empower every clinician to be an expert. You know, when, you, when you're when you with that patient, you know, what other, you know, are there any other patients in the world that have had this experience? What have they been treated with? What, what side effects, what outcomes? You know, we want every clinician, wherever you are in the world, to be an expert based upon this data set. You know, we haven't talked a lot about the pharmaceutical and medical device companies. We want to help them. We want to help those researchers find cures faster. You know, we we have a great partnership with Pfizer. We're quite excited about with the work on COVID, and um, it's exciting to see how an innovator like Pfizer can use data uh, to pursue their mission better. And you know, I think that there's innovators at Pfizer working with the caregivers that. Providence, I think, you know, that's kind of a magical combination if we could accelerate both sides of that, accelerate cures faster, you know, ex, you know, make better decisions for the patient. I mean, that's pretty magical. And ultimately, someday, you know, I think BJ alluded to this, we want to help families make the best decisions for their own care, you know, whether it be detecting things, future, detecting things before you go to the doctor, or being proactive. But I think, you know, those three things do inspire me. You know, how do we enable researchers to find cures faster? How do we help every clinician to be an expert? And then how do we empower families to make the most informed decisions about their care? And, um, and so we've got a lot of work to do, but it's exciting. You know, that, that leaves us at the conclusion of this interview. And I'd like to ask both of you beginning with terry what is your final message the my the message not the final message but the message that you'd like to present to our global audience to those millions of people who will watch this interview what is that message terry i think we can save lives with data and i think the uh you know bj's part of an organization that's saving lives every day with Trivetta, we want to give them the data they've never had before to make the best decisions possible for those patients. And BJ, the last word on this interview. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. I know. I know. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll have more than one point here, but yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about the individual health benefits. I think there's community health benefits. There's a lot we can do on on the you know equity front of, of healthcare, 
And then we haven't touched it, uh, upon it, but I'll, I'll add it here on the final point. You know, what do we do to relieve the burden of our caregivers, right? If I'm a caregiver watching this and thinking, oh my gosh, one more, more data set to look at in Truveta, you know, today, one plus one for a caregiver, unfortunately, only equals 0.5. I think a lot of them put more into these kind of systems than they get out. And so how do we make Truveta this force multiplier? One plus one equals five. Um, and we only can do that by providing the, the, the um, you know, recommendations that Terry references, putting it in the workflow of our caregivers, um, allowing patients to, to better be stewards of their own health. So this can't be just one more thing that a clinician has to do. This has to be um, that force multiplier that makes both patients more empowered, communities more empowered, and our caregivers more empowered. Incredibly well said, Terry Myerson, CEO of Truveta, BJ Moore, CIO and EVP of Real Estate Strategy Operations at Providence. Thank you so very much for all you're doing to change the world in this incredible win-win partnership that you all have embarked upon to change, to change those critical healthcare outcomes for individuals across the planet. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you, George. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Inspiring.